So I've got my coach now facing right side up and this is the hem running along here and this is the centre back vent that's not finished yet. Now this step is exactly the same whether you've stitched all or most of the way along here um, like I did, um, like the Amsterdam coat or whether you have stitched um, uh, you, you just up the sides and along the top and you've left the hem open like the tutorial for the Taylor Trench. So on the, so it's the same either way. What we're looking for here is this memory hem that we folded. So this, what you want to do is fold it. Um, the way we did the memory hem was this way. So we folded it so that it's wrong sides together and you can see um, the, uh, you can see the garment right side out around here. We want to fold it the other way and we're not folding it all the way along. We're just folding it on the edge here because this is the bit that we're dealing with. And you want to make sure that when you fold it, it's exactly on the fold. So, um, ow, whoops. This here, my fold, if you can see that, let's see if I can make it focus on it. There we go, my fold is running exactly along the top there. So I've folded it back on the fold. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Um, and I'm not interested in going all the way along, I'm just interested in folding back just this first section, because this is the bit we're going to be working on. Uh, make sure that you have, <clears throat> that you don't do one shorter than the other. They both need to be exactly the same, um, exactly the same um, uh, fold back. So they should be uh, matching, because otherwise your coat will be different lengths when you finish it. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to stitch a little line here so that when we then turn it through, if I keep my finger there as if it's stitching, you'll end up with a nice finished point like that. And then we join the lining to, we're going to do the same thing with the lining in a moment, and we join the lining to the coat. So um, here we go. So we've now folded these back and the amounts that you measure across are different it's the same length, yes it is, it's just how it's sitting. Um, the amounts that you measure across are different uh, for ladies, childs and dolls, and they're also different for left and right, and then it's the uh, the opposite way around when we do the lining. So apologies if you're doing a child or a doll size, please do look up in the pattern for your size that you get the exact right amount. Um, for the ladies, um, it's two inches across. So um, from this um, raw edge here on the left hand side, so left hand side, uh, not the right hand side as you have it facing right side up to you, but on the left hand side, it's two inches across and I'm gonna put a pin here. In the tutorial, um, it shows you how to mark that with Taylor's chalk and you can draw a little line along there if you want to do that. Um, I um, am just going to use a pin because I know that my pin is approximately the right length to show me exactly along there. Then, whoopsie daisy, so we'll keep that there. And then on the right hand side, as I look at it, um, I want to measure across three eighths of an inch. So one, two, three, and put my pin in. And if again, if you're not sure that you're going to do it a completely vertical, um, then I would recommend that you measure across um, and draw the line on so that you've got something to copy as you stitch. Now, I now I no longer need this pin here, but I'm going to keep it there because if I pull it out, this top bit here will have a tendency to pull apart and I want that to stitch straight down a little vertical line. So for the ladies, two inches across for the child, for, <laughs> for the ladies, two inches across on the left, three eighths of an inch over on the right um, and we're going to stitch little lines down there. So here we go, I've stitched my line here and my line here. I'm not stitching all the way up, I'm just stitching the bit that's folded over. Now what we want to do next is fold, is turn this through. Now this fold, I don't, I don't trim the corner off here because I find that if I keep the fold nice and I push that corner through so that it's really pointy, that fold sits really nicely kind of as a little envelope in there. So it's kind of makes a little sort of envelope and it keeps that, that bit there quite heavy so that it doesn't flap up in the breeze. So I quite like that. So I would leave that flap in there and just turn it through so you've got that nice point. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna do the same with the other one. So I put my finger in 
and my thumb there and I poke it through like that. And if I um, didn't have a really nice point here, which you can see, it has automatically, that, that fold of fabric has pushed that out. But if I didn't, I would get something and kind of push that out and make sure that that was nice and crisp. Now we're gonna iron this in a moment. Um, uh, and the way we're gonna do it is flip it so that it is um, now right side down. Let me see if I can show you my whole vent. So can... Whoopsie daisy, I'm dropping things. Um, so that's my whole vent there. That's my center back seam there. Keep my lining out of the way. And I've, I've turned this here, this corner through, and I'm gonna press this, keeping the same um, seam allowance all the way up. So this one here was 3 eighths of an inch for the ladies, and I'm gonna press it all the way up like that. Now that is gonna leave this little bit at the top um, like that, still raw. Don't worry, we'll fix that shortly. Um, but um, push, uh, press that through, and then the other side, um, you'll find will do something different. So if I get the other, the other, this is the other side of the vent now. So we've just folded that one. That's the first side of the vent, and then the second side of the vent where we fold, where we did the two inches for the ladies. If I press that up and I keep it a consistent a, ah it's so hard to show you it there we go if I keep it consistent two inches the whole way up boom 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 wow look at that it matches straight into the seam line so you're when you press it it should be straight from the center back seam line all the way down to the bottom so it's going to make a completely straight line make sure it does not bulge out like that or curve in like that you want that to be exactly straight so take some time to line that up on your ironing board because this is the bit of the this wider part is the part that you will see on the end garment so make sure that's a straight line all the way down the center back whoosh, like that so give that a really good press once you've done that, we're then going to do exactly the same thing with the lining. So, I'm going to show you that now so that you can go away with both little jobs to do. <coughs> so, we've got our, I've put my lining on top, that's my centre back seam, and this is my, my vent here, and it's got the little flapsy fabric behind it. And I'm going to come down to the bottom, and we're going to do the same thing, but opposite. So, we're going to turn this back, and I'm going to turn it along the fold line. Now this one's a little bit trickier to do because it is um, only, it's a shorter hem allowance than on the fabric. So the fabric's the one with the nice big heavy hem allowance, whereas this one is um, a narrower hem allowance. So I'm going to fold this back along that fold line, making sure that they're, oh, I can't quite get the angle of that, um, so that they're both exactly Come on, there we go, I'm trying to do things upside down, <laughs> ah, there we go, so I've now got them both folded back and I want to measure across um, the wide one on one side and the narrow one on the other side. Now we did the wide one on the left the first time, so I'm going to do the wide one on the right this time because I've now got, this is the, I've flipped my garment over, so this is the right side of the lining here and the fabric is underneath and we want them to match. So if the fabric was um, the wide one on this side, as you turn it over, the wide one needs to be on the opposite side, which is the right. So I'm gonna measure along here um, exactly two inches, and I'm going to pin this here. So this is, again, you could draw a little line if you wanted to, uh, but that is two inches along there and I'm going to stitch a little line here and then we're going to poke it through. On the other side I'm going to do exactly what I did on the right side but here on the left. So I'm going to go one, two, three and I'm doing three eighths of an inch. Again if you're doing the child or the dolls please check the amount across for your size in the pattern um, and um, do it the opposite way um, just like I have. Wider one on the left and then for the fabric and then when you flip it over and do the lining do the wider one on the right. So two jobs to do, press the vent from the fabric and then stitch these little lines here. 
Right, here we go. I have pressed these so they are nice and crisp. Uh, one side has got the, um, the small seam allowance coming up, leaving the raw bit at the top. The other one's got the wide one. And as you might have guessed, what we're going to do when we finish it off is that's going to sit on top of that nicely like that. And the lining will match up to these edges here and then we'll finish that top bit there. So then it'll have a nice flap. Everything will be hidden. I love it when everything's hidden. So flipping it over on the lining, we have, here we go, my wide one. Whoops, no, we want the lining right side up, don't we? Um, we want wide one on that side and narrow one on that side. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Poke these corners through. Make sure that it's nice and crisp. Um, I, can't, um, I can't get this really, really crisp with that. So I'm going to get my ruler. A ruler is a great thing to use to just do that. Just make sure it's not too sharp and it's not going to poke a hole in um, the edge of it. Um, and then I'm going to turn <coughs> the wide one through as well, um, which doesn't want to go, come on, here we go. So, and then I'm going to um, get that really, really crisp and lovely there, like that. Uh, so, I'm going to do the, exactly the same ironing job on this, as I'm going to make sure that is all tucked in neatly like a little... Oh, that's not quite tucked in. I'm going to get it all neatly like an envelope. Press that, and then I get the rest of it out of the way to show you. Um, this one here, when I press it, it'll go all the way up, and it'll meet that seam there, so that this is a straight line whoosh, all the way down. And then on the other side, it's just going to have the small seam allowance going all the way up like that, and it'll have that bit there. So go away and press those now. We are at the magic end of the vent, so we are nearly there, and this is where all of the little raw edges get tucked inside, and suddenly you go, oh my gosh, look at this thing I've made, it looks amazing. Uh, so, if you uh, lay everything flat, what you'll discover is that your both your um, parts of the vent with the wide section are on the left, as you've got the coat right side up to you, and the ones with the narrow part are on the right. And these corners here should match exactly, and it should run all the way along. If you haven't done the, um, if you haven't stitched along here and you're doing it as per the pattern, it should run from the vent exactly the same width all the way along to the edge here where you have stitched. And what you need to do next is to then pin all the way along here or clip all the way along, all the way along, just keeping these raw edges, not raw edges, folded edges aligned. So. Um, your goal is to have them be exactly um, aligned or with the outside just ever so slightly longer so that you can't see it. You do not want to have the lining slightly longer. Um, the technical way of doing it is to have them exactly flush, um, but I like to just roll mine just by like a millimetre just to be absolutely certain. So um, pin all the way along here and then when you get to the vent, you're going to match up these corners, pin here, and then match all the way along these folded lines. Again, keeping the folds flush all the way to the top. And when you get to the top here, these two sections will still be loose. Um, and you're going to get here. And what we have to do is poke, fold the lining down a little bit and fold the, um, ah, here we go, fold the, the fabric down a little bit as well. So tuck them both in so that you can't see the raw edges and then fold along that little diagonal fold that you've done up to the center back seam. Oh, I'm questioning whether I've explained that very well now. Um, so uh, try again, I'll say it a different way. Hopefully it'll still make sense. This is the where your center back seam stopped. Now, um, Something you can run into is if your centre back seam, if one is longer than the other, um, and then you might not be able to get the lining matched up. So if you, if when you start pinning from the bottom upwards, you find these are not perfectly in the right place, take a moment, hang your garment up, and start from the top working down, just holding them together to check that they do finish in the right place. One time, I accidentally stitched my lining like about, I don't know, half an inch longer along that centre back seam than my outer and it, they just would not line up. And what I had to do was just unpick that, let's pretend it was like that, I just had to unpick that half an inch so that they did then 
uh, match up with the ends of the seams being the same. So let's say they do match up. Then for the side where you've got the, the two, um, uh, the two uh, narrower seam allowances, Oh, there's threads everywhere. Tuck the threads in. I'm going to take the top of this flap here and I'm just going to fold it under. So I'm not interested in folding it all the way down to there because I would then have to clip in there. And if you do need to clip in a little bit, then by all means do. But what I tend to do is take it from, so you've got raw edge, raw edge. I take it from there. So I'm going to fold it down there because all of that is still stuck inside the inside the garment so it doesn't matter if that little bit there is is not completely flush so I'm going to fold it from there down to about there like that um, in fact that's actually a nice easier thing to do isn't it is press that like that and then fold that in why didn't we put that in the tutorial that is hmm <laughs> I like that there we go fold that down like that give it a press and then press your um, your little memory hem that you made there back in and then what I would do here is just pin this in place so that it doesn't kind of go out while I do the other one. Then I'm going to take the exact same thing with my lining. I'm going to fold that under there and fold that back in. So then I've got the exact same little pointed folded bit at the top. And then I'm going to, I will do this tidier again when I'm not on camera. I will fold that like that and then these two folds match all the way along there, all the way along there to there. So once you've done that side, then you're going to turn your attention to the other side. And this one here is easier because you just match um, where this top edge is here, all the way down to the bottom, to the corner and then all the way along. You're going to pin the whole thing. So I'm going to show you one that I have already pinned. Ta-da! It's like magic. And here is one I prepared earlier. So we have, I'm going to show you it from the right side and from the wrong side. Um, this is what the end look is. This is the, this is the hem. And you can see I have pinned them together all the way along like that. All the way, all the way, all the way, all the way to where we did it, where we just folded them under and we stitched along there. So it's pinned together the whole way along. And then um, the other side is exactly the same, pinned all the way along to there. Then the vent, if I lay it flat, <coughs> if I lay the garment flat, you can see the vent will just sit one on top of the other. And as we, as I bring it down, this is here where my stitching stops and it looks completely seamless. So once I have slip stitched all of this together, um, you will be able to just see the, the centre back seam line running shh all the way down, except this will be able to open as I walk. Okay, so I'll flip it over so you see from the other side. We've got, oh, there's a lot of coat now, isn't there? <laughs> all it's pinned together all the way along the bottom, all the way along the bottom at this corner. Then I pin up and I've pinned all the way to the top here. Now this flap, the, the, the triangular bit, is going to sit on the inside. It's not going to sit on the outside like that. That's going to come to the inside. So make sure that you haven't accidentally stitched your lining too long and you can't bring that through. Um, if you have, then you might need to just unpick a stitch or two so that you can comfortably bring that across so that when you flip it over, you get that nice straight line. Um, pin, 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 pin. So, I pinned all of that, then I'm going to slip stitch it together. So there are two ways you can do this. You can either use your sewing machine and you can um, very carefully um, use a small seam allowance and stitch all the way along, all the way along, all the way up and to there and then stop and then you can stitch da -da 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 -da, da -da -da, all the way along. What that will leave you with though is visible stitching along the hemline. Also, when you're wearing it, if the garment, hmm, how do I show you this right around? I don't know, I can do it upside down, I have to do it this way. So if the garment, then if the outside is heavier, it will pull down. And if you hand sew it right along the edge, 
what will happen when it pulls down is it'll just do this and it'll just sit nicely and you won't ever be able to tell. If you've got stitching running along there though, this bit will sit flat and then this bit will bulge like over the top of the stitching. So it will sit strangely. Um, now it shouldn't, if you're using a woven garment that doesn't stretch, I mean a woven fabric that doesn't stretch and you've cut it all precisely, it shouldn't bag like that. But human error, um, fabrics degrade over time, all of those things to get the longest lasting coat. I do recommend that you hand stitch this and I'll show you how to hand stitch it in a moment. Um, but for now, um, if you want to machine stitch it, go ahead and do. Um, if you don't, um, then I'm going to show you how to slip stitch it. Here is my back vent for this jacket. I'll show you this one as well as the black one. As you can see, I've pinned along the bottom and then I've pinned up either side of the vent. And if I get this laying flat with this bit, with the flap underneath, you can see there's no puckers or pulling or kind of funny lines coming out. It's all nice and smooth um, along here. And once I've stitched that um, and poked that underneath there and I give that a good press, that will look totally seamless running down the back. If I flip it over, you'll see from the other side, I've pinned along the bottom here. I've pinned um, the two, the edges, the folded edges are aligned. And then when I get to the top, um, I've pinned, um, I've folded the top edge and pinned that in. Now, after saying, oh, that's a really good idea, why didn't we do it like that? I've just realised, of course, um, I folded it in the wrong place because it wouldn't go together. What you need to do is fold from this seam here out to the corner. Um, that's where you fold, not from the seam to the seam allowance, but from the not from the point to the seam allowance, but from the point to the actual seam, so that that is tucked in. And then what we're going to do is hand or machine stitch all the way up and down and around here. And then this here is going to fold over on the inside, and we're going to stitch that there to hold it closed so that this flaps like that. And everything is all raw edges hidden and beautiful. To show you how to slip stitch your hem together if you know how to slip stitch or hand stitch so that you cannot see the threads from the outside then go ahead and do this or use your sewing machine if you want to use um, the machine option um, if not um, get a needle and put your thread all the way through it and pull the two ends so that they're together there and I have just um, wet my fingertip and I'm going to place um, the two threads between my thumb and my forefinger and roll them around like that. So it goes all the way around my finger. And then if I roll my thumb and my forefinger down, it makes this little loop just here, like that. And then if I pull the loop down, ta-da! It's made a knot. How cool is that? I can't remember where I learned that. I just really like it. And then... Um, I'm going to get my thread, my, my scissors. I don't want to have a great big long tail, so I'm going to just cut that off so that now I've just got my nice little knot on the end there. Now, when, I, and when I'm doing this, um, uh, when I'm slip stitching normally, I would sit down in front of the tally and I would do this, and I would have a much longer thread. Um, a much longer thread makes it really easy to get it caught and knotted. Drives me crazy, um, but it does last longer. This is not going to stitch all the way along here up and down the other side and all of that um, but I want to keep it nice and easy to show you what I'm doing so I will once I've showed you this I'm going to finish this off camera and um, probably while sitting watching something nice on tally so I'm going to take out the first pin because I want to make a little to get inside so that I can um, put the knot inside and I'm going to just put my needle through part of this seam allowance in here um, it's not showing through on the other side, um, but I'm going to just pull it there and pull it as kind of most of the way through, leaving a little loop, and then I'll put my needle back through that hole there. And if I pull that tight, there we go, that makes a little knot. So now, when we've stitched this together, that knot is hidden inside the garment. Now, the goal here is we're going to take um, the needle through this side and then come out and then through that side and go out and then through that side and go out and it makes this little ladder type effect and then when you pull your thread tight it all slips in and you can't see it because it's all through um, the inside of the garment so 
Um, if I start on this side and I put my needle through and I'm trying to do it on the fold, not inside the garment, but on the two folds here that I'm joining together. And I'm gonna put it through, through the top like that, bring my needle out and pull it. And then when I do it on the other side, I want to do it directly opposite where my thread came out. So that way, when these get pulled tight together, that just goes and closes up. Whereas if I, it's come out here, if I was to put it, it's come out here, if I was to put it in the garment up there, you would see the thread dragging across there. So I want to do it, it's like a ladder. So you would never have the rungs of a ladder um, going diagonally. You always have them going straight across. So going to go across there so this is not attached um, I'm just holding it together and pull that and you'll see that thread goes straight across and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side and hopefully I'll make a little ladder for you to see I'm not going to pull this tight so that you can see it and then the other side so I'm just going in um, I'm going into the fold and then Put, take the needle out again slightly further along the fold. How far along doesn't matter, but I'd normally do, I don't know, half a centimetre. So hopefully you can see that. So see how make that, that makes a little ladder? It's got little threads running across. And then if I, if I pull this, there we go. And it just closes right on up. So then you can't see it. It's like magic hand sewing. It makes you feel fantastic. Like, yay, I did that. So there we go. So same thing. And then I'm just going to carry on along this side and then go directly opposite along the other side. And I'm going to carry along all the way along, just pulling it tight as I go. But don't over pull it where it then gathers the fabric up. You just pull it tight enough to close it. And if you do over pull it, just pull it, um, uh, loosen it back up with your fingertips so that you get a nice clean edge. And then once you've stitched all the way around, um, what I like to do is, if I am using a long thread, is then do a little knot at one point so that if ever I accidentally break this thread, it doesn't unravel the whole thing. It just unravels a little bit. Um, and then make sure to tie off at the end. Then once you've tied off, let's pretend this is my end here. Um, it won't be. I'm going to go and uh, finish this. So I'll just make a little knot so that I don't lose this. So I've just put my thread in. And then I'm just make a little loop. So I'm just going on the spot. Little loop. Put my needle through the loop. And then pull it. Right, so let's pretend that's me finished. Then I'm going to put the needle inside the garment where you cannot see it, and I'm going to come out. It doesn't really matter where, but just somewhere out there. Put the needle through, come out, and pull it all the way so the thread is hidden. And then if I get my scissors, and I just push that down a little bit and very carefully clip it, the thread is gone, and the tail is inside the garment, and you can't see it. Magic! So do that with the whole of the rest of the, um, the back vent there. And then when we're finished... What we're going to do is stitch across um, this very top bit here, like that. Um, and I will show you that once I have finished slip stitching this. So I have sewed, uh, hand sewed um, my black bottom hem all together. And you can see I've done it all the way along from this edge here, um, all the way along and then up. Uh, now, something I realised after I had recorded the last bit is that in the pattern, it actually says to fold this edge under to tuck it all in. Um, before you then pin all of this. So you can actually just tuck it all inside, get that pinned down there so that you get this edge nice before you start pinning along here. If you do it the other way around like I did yesterday, what you can end up with is as you're pinning up, getting um, not quite lining them up and then ending up with this kind of bulk of fabric that you've pushed upwards. So, so it doesn't matter which way around you do it, so long as you make sure that this is not that this is all smooth, that you've not stretched it in any way so that you don't end up with anything poking out up the top. You have a nice smooth edge. So I'll show you it from the front. Um, so it goes in a beautiful straight line down that centre back seam all the way down to where that vent is. And um, the next bit we're going to do is attach this down. Now there are two ways you can do it. I'm going to show you both ways. <clears throat> in the pattern, it just shows you how to machine stitch it. 
Um, I love hand sewing. <laughs> um, as you might have guessed, we're trying not to put too much hand sewing in because I know not everybody loves it like me, but um, I love it. So I can sit and do it while I'm watching TV and it's so beautiful. Um, so I have actually hand stitched this down and what I've done is I've done the same slip stitch just along there. So you can see that is, um, oh, I've got a little tuck, I need to iron that out. So that's just slip stitch there to hold that down. Um, which then holds the vent in place and you can see some of my stitching So I might have little stitching under there. So that is hand stitched in place So that one um, the back vent is now finished that will open as I walk But this bit here will always stay hidden inside the other coat. I'm going to Machine stitch So I'll show you the back of that one All Laid out there we go. So this is my vent here so that's my hem along the bottom there, and you can see I've slip stitched along there. Um, and this is my uh, my vent here. And what I've done is I've just placed this one on top of the other so that that little edge is nice and flat under there. Made sure I've got a lovely straight line all the way down the back. And then I am going to sew in a diagonal line along the top edge, that top corner that top diagonal edge of the of the vent um, that's underneath in a little diagonal. I'm going to sew it from the front of the garment. I know I could turn it over and I'd be able to see this really easily and stitch along there. And you can do that if you're concerned about slipping off it or something. Um, but what I want to do is make sure I get my stitching starting right at this edge doing it really sharp diagonal and then stopping really cleanly so I'm more interested in what it looks like from the outside of the garment than I am about the functionality of it on the inside because this is finishing it off this is getting it all beautiful I want it to look lovely at the end so I am going to go really slowly and I'm going to use my fingertips and just feel like I can feel as I'm holding this there that that's where the edge is because there's a big lump where this fabric is so i'm going to go really slowly i'm going to line it up i'm going to start it here and put my needle in just there and then i'm going to stitch it in a little straight line there so i'll do a little back stitch there um, and then straight along and a little back stitch there now if you know that you um i don't know run in your trench coat <laughs> and this is likely to be pulled um then you might want to go back and forwards a couple of times i like this to look really crisp and neat so i'll just do a tiny back stitch along and then a tiny back stitch because i'm just going to be walking in this i'm not going to be doing anything run 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 where it's going to pull against this so um, I'm happy with just one single line of stitching to hold it. So <clears throat> go away and do that. And then next up, we're going to do the sleeve vents. This is the finished back vent. Um, you can hardly see the stitching. Can you spot it? It's like one of those Where's Wally books. Um, so dun, 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 dun. There you go. I've used the same color top stitch thread. So it's really, that's the line there. And it's really hard to see. But then it just holds that in place and um, this whole seam down here is i'm gonna i'll give that a bit of a press but that is um, a really lovely straight seam and when i'm wearing the coat would you as i'm moving around you'd never even see that so that is just beautiful i'm really happy with that We are about to do the sleeve vent next. Now we have a really handy little video that's linked in the tutorial that I did um, right uh, when we had the first the tutorial first come out. So what I'm going to do is actually paste that clip in next so that you can see it because I think it describes it really well. But there's one step that we've missed that we need to do before then. So in the tutorial, you'll notice that once we had um, unclipped one of these seam allowances um, it also gets folded back on itself and we didn't do that bit so what I need you to do if you're doing the sleeve vent with me is to place your sleeve because now they're right side out it's going to be the opposite way around as we saw in the tutorial so um, if you're following that with the tutorial open as well so you've got your sleeve right side out and um, you this is the under sleeve here and this is the over sleeve underneath so this is the over sleeve and that's the under sleeve and happily I've done them out of two different fabrics so that it's really easy to differentiate yay that's really helpful for this moment so uh, this one here we've already folded the uh, the seam allowance up and this bit back so we're happy with this but this one here has a raw edge and we need to hide that 
So the bit that is underneath, which is attached to the over sleeve, what I need you to do is fold this back on itself um, by half the width of the um, of the sleeve vent. So see that there is where the sleeve vent starts. That is the whole width of it, and I'm going to fold this piece of the under sleeve of the over sleeve back on itself. There we go. So that makes a nice folded edge there, and then I'm going to um, clip that in place there like that. Now you are ready to follow the video that's going to come next. So I will see you again in a moment after me from a little while ago has talked to you with a totally different coat. So uh, follow along with what I'm going to show you next and I'll see you after you finish this event. So this is a coat that I finished a while ago and I've now been wearing it for a few weeks because I love it. It's beautiful. Um, but we realized that a video would be really helpful to you. So what I've done is I've got one sleeve that I've finished and one sleeve that I've just unpicked for you and I'm gonna show you how to put it together so that you can see both the finished and the unfinished version of how to do this bit. So um, this is the sleeve vent. The reason the sleeve vent is there is so that when you are wearing um, bulky clothing or for some sizes just um, as it is sized for you and um, that you can get your wrist and your clothing in and out of the coat easily obviously you don't put it in that way you can go in the other way but um, it's there so that you can get your wrist in and out easily with clothing on and the there is a little bit of fabric underneath here so that creates a bit of a flap as it opens and closes um, and that's there to stop wind and rain getting in so because it's a coat but then on the inside what you'll find is that the there is no flap on the lining the flap is only on the exterior the lining goes straight um, if you held, held it together that seam there continues to run straight yet there's that flap on the outside so that's what the kind of tricky bit is um, and you will see that the coat and the lining match up all the way around the edge here and on this bit that is underneath while you're wearing it, it the lining matches up all the way along here, along that point, and then around. Um, and the um, on the other side, though, it does not come all the way to the edge. The lining comes down that part of the coat there, and then it closes like that. So I'm going to show you the other one that I have not done yet. So the very first thing to do for this step is to turn your coat inside out and put the arms through the sleeves. So you've got your coat on the inside, your lining on the outside. So what we want to do now is we want to line this up to get ready to sew it. So um, the first thing to do is as you put your coat inside is to bring the coat and the lining so that they match at the hem. So they're going to be absolutely Whoa, absolutely lined up just here so pull your lining all the way down to the edge of your coat a lot of coats have their lining like that this is not one of them this is one where it's going to go all the way to the edge the next thing is to run your hand all the way along this the seam here where the vent is all the way up to the armpit of the coat and check that your coat and your lining are not twisted so you don't want to do all this work and then discover you've got you've turned it all the way around and there's a 360 on the inside so make sure it's not twisted and then the first thing we're gonna the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line up here this corner here so see this flap here uh, remember I said this is the flap that was that's underneath when you're wearing it it's now on top because it's inside out so take your lining and don't worry about the fact this doesn't match up around here we're not bothered about that right now we just want to line up this bit here so we're going to pin this corner here and then you can pin all the way up to the edge of along the edge of the vent here so pin all the way along there and then to there now don't worry about the rest of this just yet we're going to come around to the other side and what we want to do is get this lay the vent flat and get the lining so that it is uh, this is hard to do trying to also hold it for the camera get the lining so that this is straight so that these two line up straight ah, there we go so these two line up straight like that as if the lining is closed but it's not and what you're going to do is you're going to I'm just going to haven't quite lined that up straight 
um, you're going to line that up here. Now, your vent is going to extend a little bit past here underneath the lining. That's fine, it's supposed to. Um, so we're going to um, do that and then you're going to pin this and then you can pin all the way down to here. Now, if you've stitched exactly the right length, um, the lining should be joined here like that and it shouldn't show any of that little inside bit of the coat that you can see here. This is a version that I did in pre-testing um, and we hadn't quite got these lengths right so you can see it. Now if yours stops a little bit before then don't worry just pin this bit here too and what you can do is you can um, whoops that doesn't pin very well does it? Um, you can um, you can stitch that bit just there so that what you're looking for is for it to stop the, the seam with the lining to stop here before you see the inside of the coat and then all you need to do is pin and stitch all the way around the top there so and oh, this bit here um, if you haven't done this already um, this might come up straight here across fold it under so there's a little triangle there and what you're going to do is stitch along this triangle which actually I've already done I didn't unpick that bit and then you're going to stitch along this bit here if you haven't gone all the way to the to where that would stop any bits hanging out and then you're going to stitch up here around the top I haven't pinned all of that yet but that that does match up see that goes you're going to keep that so that it's all completely flat around there all flat around there all flat around there and then come down this bit here so you are not trying to get the lining over to there the lining is going to have a little leave this little gap here and then voila on the inside it should be a straight seam on the outside you've got your flap so you can um i would i personally like to hand stitch these edges because then you get a really gorgeous heirloom type finish uh, but you could machine stitch it and just stitch down here stitch down here and then stitch around the edges but you will obviously see those stitches so it's up to you how you'd like to finish it but that is how you get your sleeve vent all lined up so i hope that helped Thank you.